a big weekend for New York City. They'll begin evicting single adults, male and female, who have been in the city's care for at least two months. And this comes less than a week after the White House announced an expansion of the temporary protection status for Venezuelan uh, asylum seekers. Dre Clark is live in New York City this morning with more on that story. Dre, good morning. Marquis, good morning. We're here in front of the Roosevelt Hotel here in Midtown Manhattan. This serves as both a shelter and a intake center for newly arriving migrants here. And this area you see behind me is where the buses will typically pull up uh, and then usher the newly arriving migrants inside. Meanwhile, uh, several thousand adult migrants without children uh, were scheduled to be evicted from their shelter location uh, last Friday. The city first informed those migrants in July they would have to find alternative housing or reapply for a new shelter location. Uh, the city says this is the best option they have uh, considering they're running out of room, but they haven't indicated if they've actually enforced those evictions because if they do so, it could mean thousands of migrants now sleeping on the street. With 60,000 migrants and asylum seekers currently living in 200 city-run shelters, officials say the shelter system has long surpassed the breaking point. One solution stops sheltering single adults without children after 60 days. The plan was announced in July, and the first round of evictions were scheduled for September 23rd. This was city officials speaking at a city council public hearing in August. As an administration, we're really, you know, a year and a half into this, crisis really needing to take a step back and think about long term what does this look like it's not abating anytime soon the city estimates 10,000 new migrants are arriving every month as the influx continues the mayor announcing new tiger restrictions adult migrants will now be asked to leave their assigned shelter after 30 days a joint statement from legal aid and the city's coalition for the homeless responding to that decision says in part pushing new arrivals who have nowhere else to turn out of the shelters risk dramatically increasing the number of people bedding down on the streets, something nobody wants to see happen. By law, the city has to provide shelter to anyone who needs it. Migrants who are evicted can reapply to stay at a new city shelter. I believe they did not come all these thousands of miles to live in a shelter with hundreds, if not thousands of others. New York Governor Kathy Hochul announced she's deploying 150 more National Guard members to help with the migrant crisis, adding to the 1,900 already on site. Last week, President Biden granted temporary protected status to close to 500,000 Venezuelan migrants across the nation that arrived before July 31st. With the TPS, the Venezuelan migrants will be able to work and live legally in the the U.S. for 18 months. The hope is they will be able to earn enough money to leave the shelter system. As it stands now, the migrant crisis has cost New York City $2 billion, and that cost could jump to $5 billion next year. And back here live in front of the Roosevelt Hotel, already we've seen one bus arrive this morning uh, with about a dozen or two dozen men, women, and children. Uh, they were ushered inside early this morning to begin their intake process. Meanwhile, the Legal Aid Society of New York will be back in court today asking a judge uh, to enforce the city's right to shelter law. That pretty much guarantees a safe bed for anyone who requests one if they're homeless here in New York City. The mayor had asked the judge to sort of relax some of those restrictions or parts of that law because he says the city is now running out of space. So they really cannot guarantee they can find placement for anyone who's asking it because now the shelter system is so well overrun. Marquis. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.